that happened to the filmmaker. I think that happened to Leslie Udwin when she made this film. It made her look for solutions to this. Leslie's got a really interesting notion here to get right in early, early childhood education to let kids know from the beginning. Here to accept the Peabody Award is Leslie Udwin. Well, Aristotle once said that educating the mind without educating one's heart is not education at all. But what did he really say? There were a few people who picked up on this and took a step forward and brought in a new initiative called Think Equal in order to educate children at a very young age so that they can be sensitive and empath empathetic towards people around them. Well, we are glad that the Sri Lankan system is going to be a step forward in bringing in this initiative into the country's curricula, into the education system, in order to see a better future for the country. Well, I've got three of the most prolific figures who are initiating this in the country. Uh, first of all, let me introduce you. The Deputy Chief of Staff for the Prime Minister's Office, Ms. Rosa Senanayaka, she's not a stranger for us and she's been one of the key figures in bringing in or securing the rights of women and children in the country. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Stephanie. And also, I've got Leslie Udwin here. She is um, uh, the winner of the Anna Lynn Human Rights Awards, one of the highest awards for humanitarian work and uh, she was also voted as uh, by the New York Times as the second most impactful woman after Hillary Clinton. And last but not least, let me also add in one more credential to hers. It's that she is the director of um, one of the most controversial but sought after movies in Asia that is um, yes. India's, India's daughter. daughter. And she is one of the prolific directors to ever have brought in the issue that's prevalent in South Asia, that is rape, torture and abuse. Thank you very much for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure. It's the pleasure, the honor is all mine. Um, Lanka water mata hari satutui. <laughs> that's great. I think during the time she was here, a few days, she has picked few up days. on little bit, three days and she's picked up on should sing her as well that's, that's my yeah. absolutely, <laughs> that's absolutely. well Aritha Vikramasinghe he is the trustee of Think Equal I think I need to grab my notebook for that because he also have a prolific career behind him which is he was a top international finance lawyer and he worked in the best finance law team in the world at a prestigious law firm called uh, Clifford Chance and uh, he was also named as um, he was ranked as number one finance leader by the International Financial Times alongside the founder uh, of uh, Facebook mm -hmm. Mark Zuckerberg how was that a whole experience altogether uh, it, was, it was incredible <laughs> I think we need a different interview to talk about the whole experience thank you very much for joining thank Arita you. it's an absolute thank you pleasure for first of all this has been a great initiative. The feedback seems quite good uh, from the country itself, as in emotional intelligence. How important is it for children, especially at a young age? It's utterly crucial. I cannot underline that enough. You know, as a world, we have been preparing our children for the labor market. We've been focusing on numeracy and literacy and preparing them with skills for jobs. Well, that's important. Mm. But heavens, how important is it to actually prepare them to be respectful of others, to be confident and empowered in themselves, mm -hmm. to be sensitive and compassionate and caring. Um, these are values which enable one to live one's life. And I maintain that governments across the world mm -hmm. actually have a duty of care mm -hmm. towards our children. And it's not 
acceptable for us to simply leave it to the parents to do this, which is effectively what we do. We say, well, that's the parents' job, isn't it, to instill values in our children. Well, the truth is that in an increasingly um, in, you know, busy world, parents have no time to do this increasingly, and indeed, they themselves have not been taught these values, they haven't had their hearts educated, they're stuck in a discriminatory mindset which keeps a cycle of violence going. Well, I am so impressed, inspired, and respectful of Sri Lanka. Do you know Sri Lanka, it's not just that they are piloting this, they have been committed from day one, when Aritha joined this initiative, in its very, very early stages, um, in London, where, you know, we were brainstorming it, and Aritha said from the outset, this has to be led by Sri Lanka. This is an initiative that Sri Lankans, you know, will hold dear and understand, and of course, who better than Sri Lanka? Yeah. After 30 years of pain, of suffering on all sides, mm -hmm. you know, to have got this far. What an amazing coalition mm. this is of commitment to peace, commitment to a better world. You know, from the president through this extraordinary prime minister you have, Ranil Vikramasinghe. Well, Rosie, uh, we've been through a very dry spell when it comes to um, uh, women's rights, at least safeguarding it. Uh, will this be a breath of a fresh um, air, like absolutely. Will, will Sri Lanka really experience this uh, firsthand? One can only live in hope. So let's hope. Uh, I'm very hopeful that Think Equal would change the mindsets and attitudes mm -hmm. of the generation that would have the privilege of uh, learning Think Equal because I think this is a subject that we have been, even when I was the Minister of Child Affairs, uh, and for years. The, the women's movement that have been working on women's issues and children's issues. Uh, when we look at the, the numbers that are reported with regards to violence against women and children, these numbers are appalling. It is shocking. And uh, if you take the world's statistics, Sri Lanka tops the list in some of it. And, uh, you know, for a small country, an island nation like ours, to have statistics which, which are negative is, um, I would say, uh, uh, not a very, we, we cannot be proud about that. And for, for a very long time, we have been actually looking at what is the root cause for whether it's violence against women or children. And let's look at the root cause. It is very easy for us to, you know, sit in judgment and, uh, you know, basically um, make judgments on the perpetrators and punish the perpetrators. But have we actually looked at the root cause and how do we address the root cause? And we have been talking about, you know, bringing value-based education into the system. You know, they do, most of the line ministries, line agencies with uh, regards to ministries that deal with children and women have been, you know, looking at the possibility of bringing uh, value-based education, social and emotional intelligence into the subjects, the curriculum, and very specially uh, into the early childhood uh, curriculum early childhood education, because that is where you need to basically, you know, a child's first five years is uh, of, uh, you know, paramount importance. Uh, that's where a child uh, gets his, his or her uh, first foundation, the platform. And it is being said that 75% of a child's brain develops in that first five years. So whatever you give the child at that particular age group is very important for the future of that particular child. So early childhood education is of paramount importance for any human being. And this is the time that we need to actually, you know, change the mentality, the mindsets, and bring, you know, uh, value-based education into the system. So we have been looking at bringing this subject, and we didn't know exactly how to design. We've been talking with the NIE, we've been talking with the Education Ministry, we've been talking with the line agencies, the Child Protection Authority, you know, Natasha Balin, the, the uh, chairperson of the uh, Child Protection Authority, the ministers, so many of us for years we've been talking about this, we've been like, you know, trying to put things together, and here it comes on a platter, and I have to at this point thank Aritha Vikramasinghe whom I met in England, we have known each other for a while, I met in England and when he spoke to me about this initiative, he said you have to meet Leslie. And one day when I was in England last year, I met Leslie and we bonded so well because we were on the same wavelength, uh, we think alike, uh, we have the same passion 
to eradicate violence against uh, women, to be able to, you know, have people who are sensitive and empathetic towards others. I mean, this Think Equal to Me is a subject that would eradicate half the world's problems. Because today, if you take the ISIS issue, or if you take, you know, uh, the issue that we had for 30 years, three decades, you know, where one thing one is superior to the other, it, whether it's racial, whether it's religious, gender, it can be anything. You know, to be able to think equal, to uh, think equal, to be able to, you know, uh, be empathetic towards others, to reach out. So you started off by saying, educating the mind is not enough. Educating the heart is the most important thing. There's absolutely no point making robots out of our children if they have absolutely no huma humanity in them. So this is a subject that we've been wanting. It has come to us on a platter, and I would like to actually thank Leslie for the hard work, uh, and I would like Aritha and Leslie to explain exactly how this curriculum was formulated and the academics that got together and designed this. Uh, I had the fortunate, I had the good fortune of actually going to London when they were doing the last stages in September back again and uh, meet some of these people because uh, the Yale uh, University's Center for Emotional Intelligence is involved in it and uh, people who whom we cannot uh, you know buy with uh, you know money to do a curriculum for us like this has come on a platter and we need to embrace it and I like to thank practically from the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka to the Honorable Minister Faisal Mustafa, the Education Minister, Education Secretary, Secretary. to practically everyone has embraced this also the NIE uh, J Dr. Jayanti from the NI, um, the UN uh, agencies that work with children, UNICEF, we need to thank UNICEF. I mean, there's a whole area of people that we need to thank because they've all embraced it so willingly. And uh, most of all, the desire that Aritha had to launch it or to pilot it in Sri Lanka, I am grateful to Aritha and Leslie for that. Action. That happened to the filmmaker. I think that happened to Leslie Udwin. When she made this film, it made her look for solutions to this. Leslie's got a really interesting notion here. To get right in early, early childhood education, to let kids know from the beginning. Here to accept the Peabody Award is Leslie Udwin. Are watching a special interview. Uh, we've got uh, f three of the most important figures in uh, the field of humanitarian work. Uh, we've got uh, the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Prime Minister's Office, Rosa Senanayake, um, the Film Director, and uh, Human Rights Human Activist, rights activist um, Leslie Udwin, and also businessman, business lawyer, and finance a lawyer. Um, Aritha Vikramasinghe, and he's also the trustee of uh, Think Equal Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for joining us again. Uh, well, I mentioned there is an economic downturn of a country being seen as a is is, is famous for the wrong reasons, like torture, abuse, rape. Uh, you see uh, tourism arrivals dwindling down, and also you see so much of other. Um, disadvantages of this. If you can explain to us as a finance lawyer. I think from, a, from an economic perspective, any form of injustice or discrimination leads to an economic loss. Uh, Sri Lanka is not uh, uh, alien to this sort of loss. You know, 30 years of civil war has meant that we've really lost out on how much we could have progressed and developed we constantly compare ourselves to Singapore. Mm. You know, there is our lost opportunity, our chance. And Singapore never went through this conflict. You know, Singapore built a system which was based on equality, based on uh, democracy yeah. and freedoms, and a system where p individuals were not uh, discriminated, had a good law and order system so that violence against women and ethnic minorities were stopped, and it progressed because of that. And Today we are still a developing nation. So these values come through education. And Singapore is a good example on a very good value-based education system which created the developed nation it is today in a very short space of time. So value-based education is extremely key mm. if we are to create an entire generation 
of citizens who are actually more focused on productivity and doing the work rather than actually fighting with each, with each other over differences such as race or religion or gender-based violence. I mean, gender-based violence is something which I've been extremely passionate about. I do a lot of work for women in need, and even in the UK, I did a lot of work for uh, women who've suffered discrimination, mm. rape, uh, and other injustices. I mean, women make up more than half the entire population of the world. And when such a significant proportion of people are being stigmatized, are being raped, are not given their opportunity to progress, I mean, that has astounding impact on economic growth and on the well-being and the functioning of society. So this has to change from a systematic point of view. And it has to change from the education system. The matter single basa in Katakran Puluanang. Then ape adhyapan system eka me rate rate tarak ne me me loe ma lamaita pasa lamaita uganda ne ganita vidya va basa va namut manuskate ape du daruanta ape daruanta manuskate pasa lalu me adhyapan uganda ne iting ape me loe ti na ape rate ti na prashna pita visadan no ena ape le manuskate ape lamaita uganda no ne Thing. Because of that is why I've been so passionate about uh, education to mm. transform society, and which is why I brought it to Sri Lanka. I was born in uh, 1984, so one year after Sri Lanka's civil war started. So my whole life, all I knew was war, you know, and I was always taught from the very beginning to be suspicious of the other person, to not trust the other person. And suspicion and distrust, just because someone is different, mm. creates conflict, perpetuates conflict. And when this war finished, I was so determined that I cannot see my country go back into that cycle of violence, which is why I brought this to Madam Rosie Senanayaka. And she understood it because we all went through this together. None of us, and the Prime Minister, who is extremely visionary, President Maithapala Sirisena, who is extremely visionary, do not want our country to go back into that cycle. And if we are going to prevent that, that is only through education. And as a lawyer, I can tell you, you know, we can have any amount of laws against rape, against violence, against discrimination. But these, these problems won't stop because there's a law. Yeah. If we don't change the mindset, then these problems will continue and worsen. Absolutely. I mean, that's the whole purpose. I have to commend Arita here, you know, for a very young man who's been very successful uh, in his career and internationally. He's really made a mark uh, for himself and uh, put Sri Lanka on the map as well. So for a young person like him to have that mindset and this is what we expect of the next generation to have this mindset you know to be right thinking people to be compassionate people to empathize with people not just people with nature animals you know um, to to have the right perception or uh, uh, of what life is all about so that's what the subject is all about. There's another beautiful quote. You mentioned the Aristotle quote. Well, Nelson Mandela, who's one of our greatest visionary leaders, said, no child is born hating. Mm. A child has to be taught to hate. Mm. And, if you and can that's be taught something to you hate, highlighted on uh, yeah. India's uh, daughter as well, where every perpetrator had an underlying issue that is the childhood and what they've been taught and you've 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 clearly highlighted that Absolutely. on the documentary you see, that's well. where i got the insights i mean it's no coincidence that think equal was born in my brain straight after i had been through the darkest tunnel i've ever walked through in my mm. life which was the making of that film mm. which was the sitting for 31 hours with mm. seven rapists who had treated women in an in inhuman way Mm -hmm. And I needed to understand what made them do that. What was the root cause of that violence? And to understand and realize after all of that deep investigation mm -hmm. that these men aren't the monsters that the media had me believe they were. They were normal men who have just been programmed by a certain socio-cultural thinking to mm -hmm. think as they do. And that's not just India. It's mm -hmm. not just Asia. It's not just Asia and Africa. It's mm -hmm. the entire world. There is not a country in the world that is free from discriminatory mindset. Mm. In that case, it was discrimination against women and girls. Mm. But tell me, what is the difference, Stephanie, between six men gang-raping a woman, mm. throwing her like a piece of 
rubbish onto the highway, naked and bleeding to die, what's the difference between that and the Hutus in Rwanda being told for six months by the Hutu government, preparing them for a genocide, that the Tutsis, another tribe, mm. are cockroaches and dogs. Doing that to dehumanize them in order to create the discriminatory mindset mm. that can stamp them out in a war. Mm. It's the same thing. It's a lack of valuing the other. Yeah, it's about the other, and the other has no value. So you could do anything with the others. So this mindset has to change. Well, we are in conversation uh, with these three prominent personalities and they've had a huge career behind them uh, when it comes to humanitarian work. Well, we are talking about Think Equal and how important it is to include it in the curricula of the Sri Lankan education system. When we come back, we'll have more on this. Stay tuned. Oh, from the beginning. Here to accept the Peabody Award is Leslie Hudwin. Well, Sri Lanka will be introducing a new um, system to the curricula where being empathetic and sensitive towards uh, the emotions of others around you will be the key uh, and it will take the center stage in this uh, um, education uh, way of educating children. So I need to mention uh, these books which will be uh, vital in uh, playing this key role of educating children in schools, in Sri Lankan schools. Um, uh, Good People Everywhere is one of the books that uh, Leslie had recommended in order to make this uh, known for the people in Sri Lanka and also the key role in this is to include it in a curriculum that children would be able to relate to. Is that right? Yes, basically what we did was we um, sought out a, a brilliant education director, Helen Lamger, and she curated these books. Over a period of a year and a half, we researched, we gathered together the best materials, mm. the best practice, existing tools and exercises. We have formed partnerships with Yale University, Montessori, mm. uh, Roots of Empathy, and we've gathered the experts and visionaries in the world at mm. the cutting edge of social and emotional learning, which is basically the name of this subject. Mm. So Sir Ken Robinson, who's one of the most visionary educationists in the world, Mary Gordon of Roots of Empathy, Dr. Mark Brackett from Yale's Center for Emotional Intelligence, Dr. Urvashi Sani, a gender education expert from mm. India, etc., etc., from all over the world. Mm. And um, Rosie was with us. We had a two-day amazing, exciting conference in London where we poured over the draft curriculum mm. And, and perfected it to get to the final draft, which now includes books like, for example, the book that you've mentioned, but there are several of them, there are 36. The crucial thing here is, it's not just a list of outcomes. Oh, by the end of the year, the kids should be able to do this, this, mm. and this. It's very detailed, very serious. Lesson plans, teacher guides mm. that take them through in minute detail, and the teachers who we've been training have been utterly thrilled by this. Mm. Um, so excited to have the tools concretely there and you know we have partnered with the UN Human Rights Office mm -hmm. um, this is a glorious program and the crucial thing about it also is another Aristotle quote mm -hmm. give me a child until the age of seven and I will show you the man he was one year optimistic because neuroscientists tell us it's between three and five that a child is has that optimal window for us to change attitude and behavior, mm. instill the bedrock and foundation of good values, you know, and its early years are crucial. Where the foundation and is also, laid. Leslie, if you can walk us through into how exactly it will be included in the curricula. Uh, it's additional to what exists. Basically, it's a missing subject. You know, our education system only involves numeracy and literacy. It was mm -hmm. designed in the Industrial Revolution and it's never been revisited. How many days will be uh, allocated for Half this an hour per lesson. Half an hour per lesson and four, four days of the week. Correct. Yes, and uh, talking about the books, you know, they, these may not be the books that will be adapted because we're looking at, uh, we've actually spoken to the famous, I mean, I admire hugely uh, Sibyl Vetha Singh. Yeah. Uh, to write. She went through all the books and she's going through the books and we are looking at some of her books. We've basically taken a lot of the 
existing local books because we either need to translate this or adapt uh, books or develop new books. So we are in the uh, uh, process of doing that as well because we want to you know, basically roll out this island-wide. At this point of time, we have basically um, trained teachers from some of the districts who run uh, English preschools uh, because so that they could you know, use this uh, curriculum for the time being. But for the island-wide, um, uh, we need to basically adapt local books or re, uh, you know, think about developing new books or translating books. And UNICEF has come on board to give us uh, the technical support uh, to the NIE uh, and, and through the NIE. And when will it kickstart officially? We are, we are basically discussing right at this point. We have, we have looked at the publishers to try and use some of the existing books. Uh, we've got the Goodwill Ambassadors on, uh, in place. Kumar Sangakkar has very kindly uh, agreed to be an, a Goodwill Ambassador. Uh, Jayanti, you know, uh, Everest Mount Climbing hero for me, for a woman to have achieved that, is a, such a huge thing. Uh, for Sri Lankan. So Jayanti has very willingly, she was actually with the training programs with us, you know, motivating some of the teachers. And uh, we have about 60 Montessori's. Some of the uh, prominent schools in the country as well have come on board so that, you know, because this is not uh, a subject just for preschools only. It'll be three to five, then five to eight, and eight to uh, 14 till the child leaves school. So we have taken some of the existing schools, I don't want to uh, name them, where they, have, they start from year three, so three to five, and then when that child goes to grade one, so we can do the evaluation, because the Yale University will be doing the evaluations, and then we will know uh, the, the change of behavior of the children who had the opportunity or the good fortune of you know, going through the Think Equal subject. Uh, so that will be... Thinking about thinking patterns, so what about the people who have... Now, eight hours a day you spend it in school and then later you go back to your family, which sometimes it changes from place to place. The family could even be racially discriminative, abusive. So how can a child really change it all around? Well, let me tell you that my children taught me a lot of things, you know. And I agree with you, there is that issue. But that is, you know, the only thing one can do with that information is say, oh, uh, let's not bother then. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to bother. Because the moral crisis we're in as a world is so deep, mm -hmm. we have to take this step, and I guarantee you it'll work. You know, we have neuroscientists, we have psychologists on board mm -hmm. our committee, and the way we are presenting it to the children is, look, you are the privileged new learners in this world. Mm -hmm. And you're, going, so you're so lucky to be learning this new subject that I wasn't lucky enough to learn, says the teacher. We have to be patient with what we see outside, with people who didn't have the luck to learn this subject. And, you know, we will do this because we have to do it. There's no other way. Thank you so much, Thanks. Leslie. It was an absolute pleasure having all of you all on. One last thing to add. You know, we live in a borderless global village and in a very competitive, in this commercial world, everybody's become so selfish and self-centered. You know, uh, life skills are not given to kids, you know, whether it's analytical thinking, critical thinking, all that will come into play if Think Equal is introduced to the subject. So this is a subject that is very important. We will be addressing the parents as well. And uh, we are hoping that, you know, the Goodwill Ambassadors will carry the message and do the advocacy uh, to promote Think Equal so that, you know, we'll have a better tomorrow. And we'll have a whole generation. And this is the legacy that we can leave behind for our kids, that we'll have a whole generation that will be thinking new, thinking differently, because uh, it is not the same. Today's world is not the same like when I was growing up. It is. Yep. I think we are all ready to be patient because it's a wonderful yes. initiative which all of us agree on. And uh, we believe that this will go forward without stalling at any given point. Correct. And be proud because yes. Sri Lanka is yes. holding Piloting. the torch. Yes. Sri Lanka is leading the whole world in this. Wow. How admirable is that? Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure having three of you all here. And uh, I'm taken up by this initiative personally. And I'm thankful for all of you all here for joining us on this wonderful interview and I hope it reaches out to everyone in the near future. Thank you very much Thank for you, joining Stephanie. us. Thank, Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I hope you tune in next week, same time, same place. Until we meet again, this is Stephanie Lazarus signing off.